In this video, I power up using a 100 watt solar panel. I suggest cutting one of these cables and I remove something. It's Da Vinci time. So it's no secret that the case batteries that have previously been reviewed on this channel have become a favourite of ours because they're a budget option which offers value for money and flexibility. So you can pretty much use them standalone or attach them to a system and they give you that grab and go power where you need it most. But one thing we've not covered up to this point is actually making a case battery a system in its own right. So in this video I'm going to show you how you can add a solar charge controller while still keeping it compact and portable and pretty much you can charge it anywhere you can get a panel out. If you do have any comments or questions, please post them in the section below and we'll see if we can help you out. Anyway, enough chat, let's go. So this is what I've been using with my setup. And this is from EP Ever, and it's an MPPT solar charge controller. And this is good for up to 10 amps. And the model number for this is Tracer 1210AN and I'll put a link in the description below. But you can choose any other solar charge controllers that work with lithium ion phosphate batteries, which the case battery obviously is. So I'm just going to put up some key stats on screen now. Right, time to make the first connection now. So I'm going to start with the battery, and you should really start with the battery when connecting up solar charge controllers. Otherwise, if you connect up the solar panels first, you could damage it. So I'm just going to get some cables ready and connect it up. So these are the cables that I've been using to connect up the batteries with my particular setup. And I made them out of extra solar cable that I had lying about. And these are actually six millimeter square cables, so they're slightly better than what's recommended in the manual. So what I'm gonna do is just put up on screen now the wire sizes recommended in the manual so you can have a look for yourself. And as I do normally, I've just put a little bit of red electrical tape round as the wires are actually the same color. And if you didn't wanna make up your own wires yourself, and you didn't have anything suitable lying about, you can actually buy some longer wire on uh, Amazon, which already has a lug in there, so I'm hoping you can see that on screen, but that might be a bit excessive for what you need for this compact setup. So it might be worth having a look around to see if you can find an appropriate wire size and lug size to fit the case battery itself. So now that's done, I'm just gonna connect up the batteries now, which as you can see on there, I'm hoping that's visible on camera. The battery uh, connection terminals are right in the middle there. So I'm just going to connect up the negative first. And make sure that's nice and tight. So let's now just connect up the uh, positive. Just make sure that's nice and tight. Okay, so there we have it. So we've got uh, the positive cable running over to this side, which again is where the positive of the case battery sits. And obviously the negative is on this side. So something else that is mentioned in the manual as well is the fact you can connect a fuse to the positive side if you so wish. I'm not doing that for my setup. Right, time to hook up the battery now. So let's start off with a positive, and it doesn't really matter which way round you do this. So let's get that one on there. And make sure that is nice and tight, it's fairly quick as you can see. So let's do the negative. And before I connect that up, I'm just gonna use a little resistor here, which I've used for inverters on this channel before. Just stops the spark and saves damage in the terminals. There's not as much of a kick from a solar charge controller usually as there is from an inverter. So let's touch that for a few seconds and then put that on again. No spark, no damage, which means the terminals stay in better shape for longer. So nice and tight. Okay, it looks like we've got some action on the display now. So I'm hoping you can see that. So it's just cycling through all the details and uh, the specific metrics that that provides on there. It's actually shown because I've just reconnected it, the loads on. You can also connect loads, 12 volt loads up to this particular port here, but I don't do that. I just connect off the main terminals. So there we have it, the battery is now connected up. So now let's get on connecting up the solar panels. So for this particular setup, I'm using MC4 connectors for the solar input. 
And as you can see here, I've just marked up this one again with red tape because I can't differentiate color wise, just to make sure that when I'm wiring it up with the solar charge controller, I get it the right way around. So that will receive the positive from the solar panel and that will receive the negative. So I'll uh, screw that in shortly. But if you did want to do a different option, for example, and maybe go for an Anderson port or an Anderson connector, as your solar inputs, you could do so. You, it might be cheaper just to get a cable like this and literally just cut, cut, strip the wire and then actually just put that straight into the solar charge controller itself. And again, you might wanna put a fuse or a breaker as recommended in the manual, but again, that's, that's your choice if you wanted to do that. Um, and you could also find ones as well or different kinds of options if you don't wanna go with the standard uh, MC4 connector route. But again, if you get the right cables, you can pretty much use these connections with any solar panel that you may have. So portable or more glass panel that would be uh, stationary at home. Right, as you can see, the MC4 connectors are now attached to the controller. So they're ready now to accept a solar input. So what I'm gonna do now is just gonna flip over to something I've done in the garden, just to show you how I connect up just a standard panel with the MC4 connectors. Right, so we're hooked up to this 100 watt solar panel from Renergy. So let's see what we've got on screen. And looks like we're getting 17 volts and 4.6 amps. So let's just scroll back through that. Let's go back to PV. So yeah, we're getting 17 volts. I hope you can see that 18 volts. And we're getting 4.5 amps. And the other advantage of this setup as well is the battery is in the shade. So MC4 connectors for the solar inputs on this setup are great, but what happens if you have panels like more of the portable kind that don't have those particular connectors? Well, that's when you need to get a bit creative with the cable setup if you don't want to go the route of actually cutting one of these cables up and then wiring it directly in there. Like for example, on this one, as I mentioned earlier, you can actually cut this off, strip the cables back and then just feed them straight into there. And again, if you want to put a fuse in line or some kind of breaker in there, you can do as well. But for example, if you wanted to connect up a Jackery Solar Saga 100 watt panel, which has an eight millimeter output, which is a little bit more tricky to do. So in this case, you could take a cable such as this, if you, again, you can either cut it or you can just plug it straight in like so. And then we've now got uh, an Anderson input and then get another cable which also has an Anderson input but goes to a standard DC uh, sort of input there as well, which also has this really handy little uh, converter from eight millimeter down to a standard size DC input. So that goes in there and this cable comes as one unit as well and I'll put a link in the description below. And then what you can basically do is just hook up the two colors here like so, because again, these Anderson connectors are really handy for this, connect that up and then plug in your Jackery panel there. So I'm just gonna go back out to the garden and show you what happened. And let's see how the Jackery Solar Saga 100 watt panel gets on. So connect it up with all the cables I've just shown you here. And what are we getting? Let's cycle through that. And we're getting 18 volts at 4.2 amps. So again, this is nicely in the shade of the panel. So if you want to go for a more compact setup on your case battery for something like this, and you go for this charge controller or something else, it's good to set up the charging profile so that actually matches the chemistry of the battery. So in this case, it's lithium ion phosphate. So in this case, I actually wanted to set up this particular controller so it worked and had the profile that I wanted to work with this. And there are standard options on here as well, and that comes in the literature. I'm just gonna put up on screen now the kind of setup options you can do with the front screen. But what I wanted to do was actually hook this up directly to my laptop and actually check the settings in there and make sure I was happy with them instead of just accepting defaults or actually try and configure them just using the front screen. So what I did was I got the cable that goes with this particular unit as well. And again, I'll put a link in the description if you're interested below. And it has a USB connector one end and has like a COM port connector the other end. So all you do is basically just hook this up into the COM port like so, 
plug that into your uh, laptop or PC, and then obviously bring down the software that you can do to actually configure this. There are quite a lot of options on there and what you could do. So again, if you wanna check out or find a profile that works for you or one that you've seen or you understand works better for your setup, then obviously go for that. But I'm just gonna share my particular setup on screen now. So something else I wanted to achieve with this compact setup was being able to use one charge controller on both case batteries. So to do that, what I've actually done or used is some of this stuff here, which is uh, similar to Velcro, and you have one side and the other, and you could just basically put it together like so, and then just pull it apart, and it actually holds things together. So what I've done is I've actually put two strips of all, like the fluffy side on both of the case batteries, so I can actually take the charge control off and swap it between them. So I'll just show you how easy that is to do. So let's just undo this side here. From This is the newer case battery, and this is the older one, why it's slightly bigger. Let's undo that because it's nice and tight. And so literally all you need to do is pull that up like so. Let's move the uh, newer case battery out of the way. And let's put that one there. And all you do is just line up, obviously once you've lined up the previous setup you've done on it, and then just push it hard on like that. Spin it around like so. And it's basically rinse and repeat of what I did with the uh, newer case battery. So, again, I made sure the leads were just long enough. So, let's undo the negative as well. And again, let's save some terminal damage. Let's make sure there's no spark. Connect that on there like so. Tighten that one up nice and tight. And hey, presto. Charge controller is attached to the other case battery no problems at all. So if you did want to go for this compact setup and you did have a charge controller and a case battery and you didn't need this temporary setup that I've put so I can swap between the two, you can actually just use the mounting holes here and get the appropriate size nuts and bolts there because these uh, lids open up and you can actually attach this directly on a permanent basis if you wanted to do so. But the other thing that's worth noting on here as well, and I don't know whether you're gonna be able to see that, but there should be, or there is still a gap underneath because there are little cooling fins under there just so that it keeps the charge controller cool. So there's still air circulating there and the actual setup that I've got on here, even though it's a temporary one, does actually give you a little bit more of a gap. So that's also worth considering if you want to permanently attach this to the lid. As covered in previous videos, one good thing about the case batteries as well is the fact that they have good terminal length, meaning you can connect multiple things at once without too many problems. So in this case, I've got this inverter, this Bestec inverter connected up. But what I would suggest is that you make sure that the inverter is the one that's connected first, so that's got the best connection because that will draw the most load. But again, it's easy to put multiple things on here. And what I'm going to do now is just connect up a 12 volt cigarette lighter output as well. So there you have it, I've just connected the 12 volt cigarette lighter output and again you can have multiples of these on here or you can even connect this off to a 12 volt uh, fuse junction box to run other devices as well if you so wish. But again this has the flexibility of being able to mix and match what you put on there. And again the inverter should be the one that's connected first so let's just switch that on just to make sure that comes on. You can hear the whirring up, see if the screen comes on. And there we have it, so that's come on as well. So all in all, a compact setup with maximum flexibility. We hope you liked our video. All the links you'll need will be in the description below. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. And stay tuned to DadVinci.